for the support and uh, energy we got today. Yeah, too. Have a ten year high. It's really cool, and uh, it's um, you know certainly some some fans drove down from uh, College Park, Maryland, but uh, what a crowd we had, and I'm, I, I couldn't be more grateful for our men to come back. You know, being down three early in the fourth quarter, then being down two with only a couple minutes left, and just. Feeding off the energy of the crowd and the explosion, especially when Thomas McCombe tied it up there with only uh, 78 seconds left. Those are some big positives for us because, you know, we just haven't been losing much this year. You know, we've been fortunate to be, you know, very comfortable in a lot of times by the time we get to the fourth quarter. Um, but uh, so a lot of great, a lot of great things happened today. A lot of great take. What a great lacrosse game. Obviously, it stings, it hurts. You get kicked in the gut when you lose it in overtime. But let's not lose sight of this. It was in a fantastic environment. Thank you to the 5,700 fans. What a great crowd and great energy and great lacrosse out here today. And, um, um, I mean, could it, could it be more even? The ground ball stats, you know, the face-off stats tied. You know, uh, the saves just about tied. And certainly what a flurry by Rupel there uh, at the very end. You know, I think a lot of us were like, okay, the net's going to move. The net's going to move. And it didn't move. And with all that in mind, you've been talking for months now about reaching the bar that, that they set. Uh, as you walk off today, I know it's not the result you wanted. Do you feel like you've met that? Yeah, I don't I, we, we We've gotten close to their bar. Um, give John Tillman credit with all the graduation and a couple of significant injuries, certainly, too. You know, Malibur on attack, happened in the fall, and losing Logan McAnany earlier this spring. And yet he's still getting his team to play at a really high level. So um, we have improved, no question. And um, But just... Just a little uncharacteristic that first quarter. You know, the number of turnovers we had. When PD's winning face-offs, but the ball's rolling out of bounds. And that happened more than a couple times in that first quarter. And, and that, I think that was a little surprising because we've been in some big moments. You know, we're fortunate to be a part of a, uh, a playoffs and a national championship in 21 and be a part of the NCAA tournament in 22. But, I don't know, it looked like the moment was a little big for us, which was a little surprising. Uh, but then we settled down and, uh, and got into a, you know, a heavyweight battle there. Do you have when, a concern that when you put so much emotionally into this matchup, that it's more deflating than, than just a loss? Uh, no, we, you know, I think we, um, you know, I guess the benefit is this is a big game, Virginia Maryland, and uh, and it's, it's it seems rare when we play and it doesn't end someone's season, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, um, but because we're in the ACC, you know, which we do feel this is the best conference we. We, we, uh, we know we got some big boys coming up here and certainly Notre Dame on Saturday. So it's not a, I don't think it'll be a too huge of a letdown in terms of the Maryland thing, but I think it's a letdown of just you know, that overtime loss. You know? And uh, so I, uh, I'm sure for Coach Tillman, he's breathing a sigh of relief after calling timeout for a goal that, <laughs> you know, could have won the game. But, uh, very grateful to have his team at save his butt. How close was that stretch, this last, that overtime flurry where Zinn gets the shot? Thomas the shot. Did it hit the pipe? Is I don't, what it, I don't know. I'm, I'm, sorry, I, I'm I trying to rub this in. I'm going to watch that about 20, 25 <laughs> times tonight. Yeah. Because I, I, all of us are just, okay, we got a four on three. You know, and then uh, we get to ride the ball back. And then Thomas McCombie's in his stick, and we know what he can do with it. You know, that what a great shot he had with 78 seconds left there. And, um, and then I think Evan Zinn got the rebound, you know, somehow that ball didn't go in. When you kind of size up them keeping you out of transition as well as they did most of the day, yeah. and also kind of bottling up Xander and, and Schellenberger as well, what kind of you think went into that? I mean, was that just as much them having everything buttoned up as well? As yeah, they, they have two absolutely fantastic defensemen. And uh, Ajax, once again, did a really fantastic job on Connor. And there's Brett McCarr, who's assigned to Xander Dixon. And so they, they, they took away our top two. Mm -hmm. You know, Peyton Cormier, you know, heroic even playing out there. He's been on crutches, you know, and he's out there trying to give us something, gives us a couple goals. Um, I actually, I think both teams did, did well taking away transition. Last year, Maryland got mm -hmm. surprise transition. Out of face-offs. So. You know, and, or even if they make a save, and it didn't look like a fast break, all of a sudden there'd be 20 and mm -hmm. the last year's eight. But so I thought we did a nice job getting back in the hole and taking away some of that. Um, and um, certainly... Uh, it was a, uh, yeah, what a, what a heck, what a great game. You took a lot of shots early in possessions, and then you ended up playing a lot of defense yes. for at least three of the four quarters. Uh, was that by design? Did you like that? It's it's kind of who we are, 
But I will admit, in the third quarter, we started talking to our men at about five minutes into the third quarter. Like, okay, we've played a lot of defense. And then the very next time, Evans in gets gets the ball, runs down and scores. And it's like, oh, live by the sword, die by the sword around here, I guess. If uh, all right, we scored. But then the next time we got the ball, we rushed something. And then the next time, Petey kind of threw a just a really slow bounce shot. And it was like, fellas, we're falling into the trap. And even when we did get a 66, we took a shot with 50 seconds left. Um, and it was like we needed to possess a little, just to give our defense and Matt Noons a bit of a breakdown there. Absolutely. So we got to be spent. And that was the first thing we talked about in the, t in the locker room just now, is situational awareness. And not just situation, you know, up one, down one, late in the game, but like, we played a lot of defense. Let's, let's possess it. Hey, Coach, you mentioned Notre Dame earlier. And certainly, you guys have a tough stretch coming up. So how do you bounce back from this before you, you enter into that, that tough stretch? Yeah, I mean, first of all, focusing on that don't waste the opportunity of a loss. When you lose, you really get sharper in terms of trying to improve. And what don't, what are we not doing well enough? Uh, you try to improve with a win, and I've been trying to do that for 20 years. Uh, but it's easier to improve, it's easier to be more focused after a loss. You adjusted to Maryland's personnel and offense, slid from the crease. Yes. Were you encouraged by how the defense played? Or discouraged? Is that something you might want to yeah. try to do some more moving forward, or is that just Maryland? Yeah, you know, Maryland certainly they challenge you with such good ball movement. We didn't want to slide too early, but you gotta be ready to slide because they've got good dodgers. In some ways I felt, you know, I'm, I, I feel without reviewing the film, I feel pretty good about what our team defense did. But then I'm like, hmm, 13 goals in regulation, a couple transition, no real man up goals. They got one after the penalty expired. So I'm like, yeah, like we must've given up at least 10, 66 goals and that's too many. You know, the goal is one a quarter. And so that was too many in terms of 66 goals. So, um, you know, we certainly felt Maryland dodging harder in the second half. They, they absolutely, they went into halftime and said, hey, we got to dodge the score. UVA is faking slides. They're showing no going. They're only sliding if they really need to. And that, that got, they got us. And they thought they were able to tie that game up and, and then take the lead there. Um, but I, I was just really impressed with Cade. With Cade Southstad with his checks and his one-on-one -on -one coverage and what he was able to do. And then Cole getting out there, especially that, that play in overtime, putting that ball on the ground. Um, so I saw a lot of positives, but yeah, it's Maryland, it puts you in that pickle. If you don't slide, you've got some guys, and we just we missed a couple of those. And there what seemed it? to be a couple, I was thinking with the defense real quick, but it seemed to be a couple like late in the shot clock where the defense played great defense for 55 seconds. Mm -hmm. Is that more encouraging? Is that easier to fix than feeling like you gave up something too early? You know what I mean? Like where it's like really right. good defense for the, almost the entire shot clock, and they just make a really tough play on the three. You're right, and and Maryland, like we said, especially in the second half, they were dodging the score. I even felt like in the late in the fourth quarter, when they had a two goal lead, they took a couple shots that, you know, they've been like, oh, I thought they would kill, kill 30 more seconds there, and you know, and so we had to be ready to slide. So, I um, there is a lot to be encouraged about, and I'm certainly really encouraged with Matt News. He's made some big time saves. Yeah. You know, I know er, uh, number 22 came around and stuck that goal to put us down two with only a couple minutes left. Then Matt made another save after that, and he kept making. So uh, I thought it was a big bounce back game for Matt, who didn't have a great spring break week. All right, thank you so thanks much. guys. Thank you.